Okay. All right, so I'm, I, I shared this PowerPoint with anyone. You are welcome to use it for your classes. You can change things, whatever. Um, I just tried doing this last year. The buzzword was mindfulness. So um, I tried doing it with the students. They actually really enjoyed it. So I'm just going to share my screen. Tell me if I'm having a problem or anything. Okay, and let me get my PowerPoint up. At your vacation? <laughs> no, that's the computer. <laughs> I was going to say you were canceled. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do. Oh, every time I try to push on slideshow, it's telling me I'm sharing my screen. So just bear with me one second, please. Um, from the start. All right, so um, neurographica. And how is the word? The word comes from, uh, it's comprised of two words neuron. Neuron, a cell that carries messages between the brain and other parts of the body. And it's the basic unit of the nervous system. And graphics, the artistic use of pictures, shapes, and words. Okay, so this guy, we kind of went through this. I went through this um, with the students. And the main benefit of Neurographica is to, pro to actually provide you with like direct access to your inner self. When you do this, you don't need to talk, you don't need to have verbal descriptions of anything, and you don't ever have to share your emotions with anyone or, any, or anything about this. This is solely for um, students and for them to just kind of get in touch with their emotions and their feelings and stress, to relieve stress. So if we look, we can see the brain. Um, these are all the neurons of the brain, and you can see, um, The more you want to try to do tasks, the more energy that you need to approach these tasks. And these lines are really the energy going through. And Neurographica, we're going to use an algorithm to help us to engage that the neurons and the synapses into our brain. Okay, so this is kind of going really into like some science stuff here. Um, and for the graphic perspective, you'll see that they kind of are represented by circles and circle-like shapes, and they're connected with a lot of lines. And this is something also you'll see in atoms and molecules, and you'll even see it in the galaxy itself. And this is how we see the galaxy and the representation of it, circular with the lines. And um, so you can see that this also is energy, and it's giving energy. So we're going to make connections. Um, we're gonna use an algorithm that I just picked up that I thought was kind of cool. And we're gonna to try to get in touch with our inner source. And so this is the algorithm we're gonna use. I'm not gonna read it to you because we're going to actually do it. So I am, I'm leaving it there so that you can remember how we did it. So if you wanna do it and um, you're, you're welcome to do it. So now Steph, I don't know if everyone can see my page. How, is there a way? Yes, we can see it. You can all see this? Yes. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is kind of, this is a, a really a guided activity that we're going to be doing. Um, I showed some of my students did it on black paper, black paper with white, which uh, I know Steph put that out that if you wanted to do that, you could. Um, or you can just use white, you could use Sharpies, you could use regular pen, pencil, it's entirely up to you. So this is how I started. And it's a, it starts with a little bit of a guided uh, kind of um, practice. So we're gonna do this and we're gonna do it with guided. And I usually play music, which I forgot. I'm gonna play a little music in the background. If it starts interfering, just let me know because I've never done it with Zoom with music. So um, usually, you know, I, I do this with the, um, the students. When I did it, I just played music in this classroom. So if it bothers you or you can't hear me, just let me know, all right? So the first thing you want to start with is you. Can you let me you? I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to stop this. It's not going to work. Oh. All right. I'm going to stop the music because I think it's going to, it's just kind of, it's hard for me to talk over it. And I can't lower the volume on my computer and talk and lower the volume on the music. So, oh, okay. all right. So what you're going to start with is, and I usually say, we start with a circle. We start with a circle somewhere on the page for yourself that represents you. Now, remember I said you don't have to share anything, but if you want to, you can. So what you're going to do with this, I just took a regular Sharpie 
and you're going to start with the shape, a circle, and I'm going to label it pack. All right. If you don't want to label it, you do not have to label it. If you want to use a pencil, if you want to make it smaller, do not worry about it, but you are labeling it um, as you. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to think about, well, why do you want, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to overcome? Do you have a fear? Is there something that's bothering you that's stress related? Is there, um, is there something that you're just having a hard time or difficulty with? So you want to think about your stress, your fear, your anxiety. What is that to you? And everybody's is different. So you, I would like you to make a shape, but you're going to make it near it and you're going to do it as a dotted line. It can be a circle. It can be a different shape. It's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to put a dotted line here. And this is my, I'm going to write fear. You do not have to write anything if you do not want to. If you have something that you're stressed about and you want to write that, go ahead and write it. It's entirely up to you. If you want to put it in pencil and erase it because you want to, don't want to see it later, it's entirely up to you. But for this demo, I am going to be writing everything. So I'm going to put my fear. And what I want to do is how am I going to overcome that fear, that anxiety? What are going to be my resources that I could draw upon? Maybe I'm going to start meditation. Maybe I have a good support system in my family. Maybe, um, you know, I'm going to do something. Maybe I have a friend that I'm going to be able to talk to. Whatever your support system is, I want you to take whatever your support system is and have it connected to you. So my support system possibly could be my family. I have a husband. So my husband's name is Jim. So I'll represent him here and he's connected to me. Then maybe um, I have three children and maybe I have my one daughter, my other daughter and my son. So they're somehow either connected or within my area. And I can write their names if I want. I don't have to. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be this many. It could be more. It is entirely up to you. So I'm going to write Tori, Liz, Jimmy. Okay. So these are going to be my support. It could be anything. Maybe you're going to do meditation. Maybe you're going to walk. How do you think that you're going to overcome your anxiety, your fears? Who's going to help you? How are you going to get that? What's your support system? And then we talked about how energy, energy is in everything. So what we want to do is we want to give energy to not only ourselves, but we want to give energy to our support system to overcome and dissolve this, this anxiety, fear, whatever this is. So you're just going to take and you're just going to make lines. And you don't, again, as Steph said last time, you don't want to make anything straight lines. You want to keep things. And again, you want to see if you can take this and with the lines, you're going to just go through, maybe have them coming. Okay. So what is it? And it doesn't have to look like that. It could look more, it could look less, but you want the more energy you have, the more it's probably going to help you to get rid of this. Okay, so we are trying to dissolve this, all right? What we also want to do is, what else is going to help you? Do you have, we want to have a higher being, or what do you believe in? Do you believe in a higher being? Do you believe in the universe? Maybe you believe in science. What is your belief system? We want to kind of represent that somehow here. And anywhere, it could be above you, it could be below you. I usually like to do something, whatever my support is, whatever my belief, and, uh, and it could be science, it could be anything. And I'm just gonna actually represent that with almost like a spiral, just somewhere. This is, for me, this is above me. This is my, my it could be my faith. You know, do I believe in science? Do I believe in a higher being? Whatever that is to you, represent that somewhere. And always when you're working with this, try to remember we're trying to overcome this 
anxiety, the stress and everything. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm playing music. So it's a little bit calming and you want to kind of always think about, all right, I've got support. I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to dissolve this. I want to get rid of this. Okay. So now what we have is we've started to have, and you can go on to different, you know, uh, size pens. If you want, you can change thicknesses. Once you feel that you kind of like are not seeing them anymore, you're dissolving them. Then we're going to think about, well, we have this energy going through. We want to dissolve this, but what do we want? We want some type of abundance. What kind of abundance? So what I like to do is you could do any shape you want for abundance. I'm going to stay with like an oval shape and I'm going to put my abundance. I'm going to do an abundance oval over here. This is my abundance. What do I want? Do I want, and I tell the kids, what do you want? Do you want fame? Do you want wealth? Do you want security? Do what is the abundant things? What do you want? So you maybe you want more friends. Maybe you want inner peace. Maybe you want health. Maybe you want wealth. Think about the things that you want. Put them so they're in your abundance area. What do I want? Maybe I want less stress. Maybe I want wealth. And it could be any shape. It doesn't, I'm just using circles. You really could use any shape. I like the circles because it brings back to the concept of the galaxy. Okay. So this might be my abundance. You can write this here. Maybe success. Don't be afraid to write things, especially if you're doing this only as like, just to get yourself cleared your mind. You don't have to worry. Again, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Maybe this is health for some people. Maybe this is just to relieve and relax. It could be for anything, okay? All right, so now, once we have our abundance, am I going too fast or is everybody okay? Good. Okay. okay. All right, so we have our abundance and we have it kind of floating here. Let's give it a little bit of strength. And what we want to do is I'm taking a thinner marker now. I want to make, I want it to be almost like living and growing my abundance. So I want to make like maybe a tree, almost like a tree. So I'm going to make again, lines going up to make a tree to support everything that I want abundant. I'm going to make some lines. You want to keep your base of your tree very the trunk of it to be very like secure and, and and large you don't want to have like this little small thing and you want to keep it so that this way you will have your abundance it will be supported and you want to make support again i change the size you can change the size you can change the color of your pen you can even go to a pencil if you want it, this is all whatever you feel it's not supposed to be, it's supposed to be coming from you. So it's not supposed to be, nothing is wrong when you do this. And I tell the students that there is nothing wrong with this. Everything is right because it's coming from you. So it, it will always be white, right. Okay, so once you have pretty much a basic of you feeling, so it's you with the energy going through, you were dissolving whatever was bothering you your fears, your anxiety, you dissolved that and you gave through your support, you got abundance. You started with the abundance and you, what, and while you're doing this, keep thinking to yourself, I am successful. I am healthy. I am whatever, what it is, it is. I am relaxed. I feel confidence. I have friends. And you just keep kind of like a mantra, like this energy is going through and I am having all of this. Okay. Once you start doing that and you really can, now is when you start having a little bit more where you're playing and you're just, and, and this is where the part would come in where I definitely had the music going for the students. So similar to how we did last week, where Steph was telling you, and for those of you who weren't here, what you wanna do now is within your connections, you want to try to, 
I don't want to say bubble, but it's kind of like bubbling or making things a little on with circles. So how I like to tell the students is when you have intersecting lines, I want you to try to make a diamond within it and then close it up. Okay. And then within all these intersecting lines, you just start to kind of get in the zone and start making all of these connections. And what you'll see is by doing it, you're actually creating a circle within it or kind of an overly kind of a shape. Does everybody kind of see that? So this is really how you start doing it. And just, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually play the music now. And we're just going to give you some time to like, think about it. And continue to create these.
at this point, I also tell the students that they also can create bubbles almost within their areas. So they can at points just kind of create bubbles. If you, I see my word fear. If I don't want to see it, I can just really cross it out, black it out. Okay, I kind of muted that. Did somebody say something? I said the, the coolest part about this whole process is that while it's there's kind of a formula, there are never any two that are like everyone and every single one is completely different. Yeah, and it should be that. It should just be coming from you. That's what I always tell the students. It's just coming from you. So if it's coming from you, it's not wrong. And it's kind of good, like they really kind of get in the zone. You play some music, they get in the zone once they get the hang of it. And I mean, they really had a good time with it. It was just one of those projects that worked out really well. I love this. What grades do you teach again? I teach eighth through 12th. So, um, hey. I did this with my my Studio One class. Okay. So the majority of them were uh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. This could be a really good um, no fear opening project for mm -hmm. the year. For, I mean, you're not telling the kids to draw anything specific where they would get scared, you know. Um, the I, yeah, and I think having like that algorithm, I honestly, you can change that up however you want. You can make it anything you want. You can even do it for younger grades. I think by giving them a start on how to start this with the different shapes and circles and having lines connecting and, you know, making it like the energy and everything, I think that gives younger kids more of a start on how to do it. Otherwise, you're just going to see, you know, I mean, I, I taught younger ones and they're just like scribbling around. So it gives them a little bit more of a defined way to start this. And then once they have it, you just build on it. So once you do all of this and you feel happy, I always tell the kids, start coloring. Use whatever you want. Watercolor, marker, colored pencil. Do not think, you don't have to think about color theory. It's coming from you. Whatever colors that you like and you pick, use them. If you don't like that color, don't use that color. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a complimentary color scheme or anything like that. It's coming from you. So again, nothing is wrong if it's coming from you. So I'll generally start this and then they can just color as much as they want in the unfortunately i don't have the black and white ones because some students did try the black and white and they used white color pencil and then they used colored pencils to color over um and some of them even use the construction paper crayons which color really nice over the black 
I'm actually working on black paper today. I thought I'd give that a try. Oh, oh good. I didn't want to show that. I wasn't quite sure how that would like look on the screen. Oh, I can't wait to see yours. <laughs> how is everybody doing? Great. Sounds like everybody's in the zone. <laughs> This will be great for the first lesson, seeing how I'll be on a park for the first part of the year. Yeah. And the funny part, some of them come out so looking like scientific almost. <laughs> The sample of the actual neurograph from your um, slide presentation reminded me of like a, um, a tele, uh, what do you call it, from like a spacecraft photograph of the planet. Mm -hmm. where, you know, there were big cities were lit up more than others than the remote cities. That's what it reminded me of, like mm -hmm. from, from space, a photo, uh, an image of the earth at night. Right. It's kind of neat. With all the roads and highways, like a map in reverse, kind of. Mm -hmm. You know, and at any time you can put whatever in color, you can start in using the color whenever you feel comfortable with it. This is a good opening thing for some of the students too, especially the ones who feel like they can't. Oh, I can't draw. Said no, what? No child ever, right? Ever, never, never. <laughs> for those that think everything has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It's funny. Every year I get more and more of those kids. Mm -hmm. And last year I headed it off. And on my board, I wrote in big letters, what if I can't draw, question mark. And then I, underneath it, I said, it doesn't matter because you're here to enjoy yourself and learn something new and try your best. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time I got one of the kids who would look at me and say, what if I can't draw, I would point to the board. I said, read the board. Yeah. I've tried to remind my students that um, when they first go into their other classes, they're there to learn something and um, uh, that they shouldn't expect to be experts when they walk in the, in the door. And that if they'll have an open mind, uh, a growth mindset, and we talk about a growth mindset and what is it versus a fixed mindset, that there's lots of opportunity for them to grow in their skills no one expects them to be, you know, really, really good when they come into a calculus class or whatever already. So I, it's the same thing with art, in my opinion. Yeah. But they, we do somehow get that, uh, that uh, fear going in elementary school age. So I, I just tell them, hey, I don't know everything about a subject when I first walk into the classroom. Otherwise, why would I be there? Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I just tell my kids that, hey, I'm an art teacher and I don't draw well, so you can do anything. 
They just look at me like, how'd you get a job teaching art if you can't draw? And that gives me a chance to tell them that art is so much more than just drawing. Yeah. Anybody adding color yet? Not yet. Not yet. I mean, I was looking online and there's lots of images of people doing this stuff. So if you wanted to add stuff like that to your PowerPoint, um, if you wanted to show something like that, there's so much out there now. This is extremely relevant right now. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, you can put the, the fear could be just basically kids, just the fear with this COVID. I do this, this with my kids. I think I'll have parents calling me. How do you do it? Tell me. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I said, once I show the kids how to do this, I think I'll probably have parents calling on me. Okay, show us how to do it the right way so we can do it too. <laughs> because it's so re relaxing and just. It, it's like, you know, once you start with coloring, I always feel like those coloring books, they're supposed to be stress relievers. You know, people get bored into all these coloring books. Uh-oh, did we lose Pat? Oh, um, are you there? I'm sorry, did you lose? I, you might have lost me for a minute. I'm sorry. It's okay. You, I did, we lost you after coloring books. Yeah, no, you, you know how they're selling all these coloring books and they're like, you, we leave stress and it's like, I'm like, we've known this for how long now? Right. You're just knowing this, just the act of kind of just doing it, getting in the zone, really. It's very relaxing. It can be extremely relaxing for people if you just allow yourself it. I think one of the benefits of everything that has happened is that it, it has reminded us that we have to slow down. Mm -hmm. And really, while everything is plugging in, um, we do need to disconnect in order to, to relax. Um, and, and ironically, we're plugging in together to relax, but um, <laughs> uh, there, there's a benefit to slowing your brain down and, as you said, being mindful and enjoying the moment and taking everything in and appreciating the things that you do have instead of freaking out over mm -hmm. things you cannot control. And I know we're plugging in to do this, but this is good because this gives me that time that I crave and I often deny myself. Right. Just make art for making art for no other reason than for myself. I wish they understood that on the administrative level yeah. that why does everything have to be qualified and quantified? Why can't we have art for the sake of making art because it's good for you? It's good for the soul. Mm -hmm. And the only way that they can validate that is by quantitating it and, and you know, giving it more weight and, I don't know, all these fancy words. But I just want to make art for art's sake and keep kids to see the world with bigger eyes mm -hmm. you know? it's, it's because it's not measurable which is what our business model and our is is economic model is all about and if it's not measurable it's not profitable and so you have a lot of pressure that um, it can be eliminated but what we're discovering or what what people are finally beginning to recognize is how important it is to culture and the soul to express what's going on in the culture, what's going on with the individual, 
rather than just measuring in terms of numbers or data or dollars and cents. Right. So that's, that's where a lot of it is. We have to be kind of aware that what's driving a lot of the, oh, we can just let art go or the music or, or whatever, the arts per se, is uh, all based on whether or not it's profitable and economically um, viable, measurable. Well, it's measurable. The evidence is clear in the long term, in the holistic development of the child. It's not, you know, a numbers game. If you if you put yellow and blue together, you get green. It's not. That's not how you measure a kid's development, inward and outward. It's you know, it's more than that. So. The rewards come later in how they see themselves and how they see the world around them. We understand this, but most non um, are non empathetic persons do not. I mean, we're fighting right now because they're cutting some of our program. They decided to cut all my media art classes are cut. Oh. In them next year, which I was like, okay, that's a really weird class to cut <laughs> because when you're you doing online uh, digital work, it's so much easier and easier for the kids to actually be successful in. But that's weird. That is weird. You would think they would have kept that. Yep. And then they also said that the um, elementary art teachers and music teachers dropped the ball and really did not do much with their students. So they're rethinking what they're, what they're, they call them the on-course subjects are going to be doing at that level. I'm like, I cannot believe it. What do you mean drop the ball? Well, they said they dropped the ball. They didn't engage the students enough for, uh, I don't know. I really don't know why they're saying this. But this uh, how much time did they have to prepare? <laughs> um, two minutes. <laughs> did they give you any PD? No. You did? No. What's that? <laughs> I know. I know. Well, where I work, they, yeah, I work at a university, but they, from week one, they were giving us PD. This is how you do Zoom. This is how you do that. Here, yeah. think about this. They're still giving us all these courses. It's great. But they can't say that to you if they don't help you out. Nope. Well, I mean, that was our fight. Out. That was our fight. We were like, listen, you had no kind of a model. And they said, well, I mean, they were doing what they could, felt they could do, some choice boards. Um, but I guess they didn't feel that they were engaging the students enough. I, I, I don't really know. I just know that I was like chained to my desk yeah. at the high school level. Yeah, <laughs> I was in my, in my studio 10 hours a day. I couldn't yeah. leave. I was and too between making up demo videos for them to watch, but I couldn't be online with them. And they had to be able to, if they wanted to at 11.59 PM, they could hand things in. It, it, was, it was ridiculous. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. They say they dropped the ball because there were a lot of kids who didn't pass because they didn't do the work or- like No, what? everybody passed. I don't know about your district. But we were not allow we were not allowed to have distance learning drop a student's grade. Wow. So then what is the merit of that kind of statement that they dropped the ball? On what are they I have no idea. <laughs> I was like, you guys I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I just was it was pathetic. It's really it's one of those I don't know if maybe that was their way to say they're gonna make people more accountable. They when we we went from third quarter to fourth quarter, like the second week of distance learning, and when we were like, okay, I need to make my students accountable for being in my class. So what I did was we could only grade the kids a zero, a one, or a two. A two was 100, a one was a 75, and a zero was 50. And so what we decided was, okay, we have a five-day week. Um, I could not be live on a chat or anything with it. We weren't allowed to do that. I just had to put up videos or an assignment, whatever. 
And then I would post every morning. I would post a little joke. I would post, how are you? I would post a little meme, whatever. They had to, they were supposed to come in and give me like a thumbs up or reply to my post anytime during the day. 11.59 p.m. they wanted to, as long as they replied during the day. And I gave them 100 if they replied three, of, if, so it was three to five times you got 100. One or two times you got a 75. And if you didn't do it at all, you got a zero, which is a 50. And I did this for like three weeks. And then the parents complained, how dare, how, how, could, we, how could we hold them accountable like this? So then a directive came from my director, okay, can't do that anymore. I'm like, so why are these kids even bother coming and showing up? Right, right. Well, that's what happened in a lot of schools. So I think in my school, they need to get on the ball with more accountability. Because well, the problem is the parent accountability for their kids. Yeah. I don't know, they keep telling us how, how much more accountable can we make ourselves? You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're working in the beginning, it felt like 24 seven because the work was coming in at all hours. And you know, like you said, we were chained to our desk. And the outreach was constant, and we had to chase the kids down and call the parents, and it still didn't matter. And where's that accountability? Mm -hmm. uh, we all did the best we could with. Yeah, it, it was, it is what it is. And, and we all know better now, you know. And, and I, I mean, I've had this discussion with the um, other art teacher who does the upper levels. And I'm like, you know, unfortunately my studio kids who are going on are not totally prepared like they ever would have been. We never got to printmaking. We never got to a lot of things. Right. And I mean, I tried to do some printmaking, but who didn't have whatever. And even just simple rubbings became a disaster. <laughs> What did you ask them to use when you did printmaking from home? We did, I did rubbings, which I was like, okay, a form of printmaking is rubbings. I tried to get them to do some printing over with their sneaker. And oh. even going out and putting your sneaker in mud and putting it on a piece of paper is printmaking, you know? It was tough, it, it was tough. Some kids did very well with it, others, it's just, you just couldn't do it. Hmm. Are you using watercolor, Pat? Yeah, I'm just using watercolor. I figured for this one, I'll try some watercolor. I like the watercolor. I mean, working on black, so watercolor doesn't work for me. Who's doing black, too? You could do, uh, with black, you could use oil pastel also. I don't know if you have that available. I do, but it's in. it's outside. It's in the garage. I don't. <laughs> That wasn't on the list, <laughs> and I didn't think. You know, crayons work well with black also, construction yeah. plates for crayons. Prismacolor pencils are awesome yes. Yes. on the black. That's what I'm using. Oh, I'm excited to see what everybody's doing. <laughs> I am too. Have you heard of an artist named Scott McIntyre? No. He does, look him up, he's a Long Island artist, Scott McIntyre, and um, he does, his paintings are called, are actually called energy paintings. Oh. And, um, it's, I mean, he does flowers and birds, he does stuff from his garden, um, and it doesn't look like anything like what you're thinking right now, but um, pretty cool artist. And he uses, um, you know, themes of envi the environment, Pretty cool. Scott McIntyre. Yeah, it's not uh, <laughs> it. Let me see how he spells it.
Yeah, I'm not getting the way I was spell. I was spelling it M C I. It's, um, Scott M C I N T I R E. M C I N T I mm -hmm. R E. Scott McIntyre. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he does all these um energy paintings. Pretty cool. He had a lot of work up at the Nassau County Museum of Art. Oh. Hmm. I have to check it out. Uh. I think this is a wonderful, wonderful lesson for kids. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so into this. I, I'm sure the kids went crazy when you showed them this. Pat. They, it was one of those that it worked out really well. They loved just sitting and listening to the music. Once they got the hang of it, and then the part of just actually just coloring in and painting in, or you know, they have. I don't run my club as a, a class as a tab. I never ran it as a tab class, but I always gave them ample materials, anything they wanted to use. So that's where I ran mine, like, as being kind of a tab where you could just, you know, use whatever you want. If right, you want. where they have their own choice. Right. But I love this because you can't, you're right, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. No. No matter what you do, you cannot go wrong. And I think the more you do it, the more you fall in love with it. You take ownership of it. This is really good exercise. <laughs> So Stephanie, you want to talk about next week? <laughs> I was just thinking, should I interrupt and do that? Um, actually, yes. Next week, we have um, the session is going to be led by Kaylee, who is with us today. Um, she's going to be doing a an accordion book exploration project where oh, we. Awesome. A little um, accordion book and then she, she's also going to do um, a little PowerPoint presentation on all the different options that you can have in terms of materials and what to put inside um, so I'm looking forward to that also and I'll be posting that either Sunday night or Monday morning and um, if anybody has an idea for the, the following week or the next session after that, I'd love to hear from you. If any of you are interested in the project suggestion list that I sent out and you would like to see that happen, um, but don't necessarily want to run it, let me know. Um, if anybody has ideas they want to throw out right now, that would be great, just so we can get an idea of what's coming and plan for that. Anybody, anybody, anybody? Where's the list again? Um, I can send it out the list on the email. Okay. I sent out the original list, I think last week. Um, and I can do it again. Does anybody have an interest in embroidery or um, I do a mandala project that actually I was asked um, to do a presentation for at the NAEA conference in November. I could do that. Um, I'd like to see both of those because the embroidery would even fit in with the accordion book as an option. Just because the accordion book, like I do embroidery, well, more like using sewing as a technique that could be like drawing or it could be coloring. I mean, I, I just kind of show the kids a bunch of options and we work through it and I'm not the best at embroidery. So 
a refresher would be nice. <laughs> okay, so we could do an embroidery. Um, I actually created a template a couple of years ago to learn embroidery stitches by creating your own color wheel. Um, I could send that out as an option or an idea if you guys are interested in that. And I don't know if anybody has any other suggestions, just all you have to do is email me and reach out. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Mom. How about that project that we did with the felt, um, you know, like the felt flower square from that felt quilt and then embroidered the piece well, of Well, it was a felt applique? Yeah, yeah. I could, I think I have that on the list, felt applique as an option. Um, I don't know how comfortable everybody is with sewing but I could put it on the list and if we get responses, then uh, we can go from there. Okay. I finished my line work. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Oh, wow. What? I've what got so many do? lines on Oh, wow. wow. Who's doing it? I can't see. Oh, cool. What are you using? Um, I actually used a Sharpie water-based paint pen. Wow, that came out really, really amazing. Huh. The white is, you know, it's wonderful. It's so thick. I had to go over it a couple of times. It's great. Mm -hmm. That looks great. Yeah. These Sharpies, they come and I actually just sent it to mom. They come in a set on Amazon in four different um, point sizes. So I think it was $15 if I don't, if I remember correctly for four different size markers. And um, yeah, the color on the black paper is, is just really nice. You might have to go over it a couple of times, but the opacity is great. Yeah, it really is. It looks beautiful. Thank you. Jeff? Yes? Can you see me? Can I see you? Yeah, because I want to hold something up. Well, we can highlight you. Um, okay, what do you want to show? What I'm working on here. I don't know if I've got it right or not. Well, show it. Oh, wow. That looks great. Cool. That's beautiful. Good? Yeah, that's excellent. Yep, yep. That's great. Well, good. All right. Great. I'll probably never get done with the line work. <laughs> <laughs> the more lines, the more itty bitty yummy little spaces you can fill in. I know. Oh, that's beautiful. I see Haywood. Let's see if I can highlight you. Oh, oh wow. Nice. Oh, wow. You see how everybody's looks so different. Yeah. Ooh. I, love, I love that spider webby looking thing at the top. That's awesome. You're muted. I can't hear you. Hi. <laughs> uh, my kid's sticking hers in my face. Oh, oh look at nice. that. <laughs> <laughs> as long as people are putting theirs up, I'll put mine up. I haven't started the colors yet. Jelly, that's beautiful. Ooh. <laughs> Very nice. Everybody, Shelly, where, where are you from? Sparta, North Carolina. Oh, you just look so familiar to me. That's what. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I get that a lot. Shelly, I'm in North Carolina too. Yeah, I friended you. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know Jarena and them too. All right. What colors? Colors, colors. Don't you know, know, Steph, Aiden might like this. My nephew, Aiden. Yeah, I bet he would. Might, might, might. Maybe Kate also.
Did anybody ever try the garbanzo bean thing from last week? What's that? <laughs> we were talking about easy class projects with, with things that you can find at home for a sculpture. Mm -hmm. And my mom, when she taught um, art class when, when I was really young, came up with this toothpick and garbanzo bean project that you could just stick to the, the rounded toothpicks with the pointy ends mm -hmm. and you soak a bag of garbanzos overnight and um, not till they're mush but you know kind of halfway through regular and and dry and then you, you build by sticking the toothpicks into the garbanzo beans and then as they dry they tighten up around the toothpick so it's nice and solid and then you could paint it any way you want. Oh, that's a cool you one. You paint the chickpeas? You can paint dry? That, yeah, when they're dry and you can oh, paint the toothpicks. That is so cool. What a great idea. That's it's a great, great idea to do for remote, remote teaching too. Right, right. Uh, that's what we were talking about last week. If everybody could buy a bag of garbanzo beans for a dollar, you know, and um a and the toothpicks for a dollar at the dollar store. Exactly. No, they don't have them in Stu Leonard. They only have the canned ones. They don't have, have to try a different supermarket. Yeah. Well, that stinks. I'm taking a break for a few minutes. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, just. I don't think I'm ever going to finish the edging work on this either, but I'm really enjoying the process. Me too. It is a wonderful process. Very mm -hmm. good. I don't know if I can. Well, there's such a diversity oh with mediums that you could use. It's unbelievable. Wow, Renee, that's really interesting. I'm awkwardly holding my computer, so I don't even know if it's in the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, you know, you can stop or continue as much as you want or as little. I let the kids decide if, like, so if you look at mine, I have white spots. I allowed them to leave white if they wanted to. I allowed them to finish. I even told them that, like, so with the watercolor, I may even go back into it after it's dry with a little Sharpie marker. Maybe, maybe even get into some of those, like, little Zen tangles or something on it. So you can go a million different ways with this. That's the beauty of it. It, it can, can lend itself to any medium and any, um, any subject, really. Mm -hmm. If there's anyone here who is new, um, just make sure you send me your email address so I could add you to our mailing list. And um, to, by tomorrow morning, I will send out a copy of the link for the Google Docs folders and the um, recording if you guys want to watch it over again. And I'll send the project list to see if anybody wants to request or volunteer. Does anybody want to volunteer for the week after? I can do it. Anna, who no. said? Who said? That? Uh, Renee. Renee Wiggins. Hi. Hi, Hi Renee. <laughs> so what uh, are you going to do? Are you no. 
a project. I think we'll probably have to do it pretty tiny for time reasons, but I do with my kids, I do a, um, a diptych Zentangle project where I have them do um, create a Zentangle on white paper with black ink. And then I have them make a sister with black paper and white ink and they look good together. And we talk about different ways that you can do diptychs and different ways that you can um, relate them to each other and how you can. I like that positive and negative thing. That's yep. a good idea. And like, much like this, it's very, um, very relaxing. <laughs> okay, so I will put you down. Do you notice how whenever you do a Zentangle project, you have some kid maybe an A-type personality that just, if they're not getting it exactly the way they want, <laughs> and they get stressed. We, then we have that with the project. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for volunteering. So then I'll put you down for the week after next. Yep. Um, and I'll send you an email and we'll talk about the logistics. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you. I was hoping somebody would do Zentangles. Um, I don't know if she's on this time, but someone talked last time about how they had a whole like booklet that they share with their kids of different ideas for Zentangles. Um, I have a couple of sheets or handouts with different patterns. Do you want me to, well, we could talk about making those available to everybody also. Yeah, just for people that don't, when you have those kids that struggle with coming up with their, their the own. When I do it in class, we talk a lot about how, uh, we talk about the co-creators of the Zentangle movement and how they capitalized on it and how mm -hmm. they took something that everyone does and they copyrighted it and they made teachers for it. <laughs> yeah, they make tons and they of make, money on certification. That's so. Yeah. I don't even think you're allowed to actually call it Zentangles. Yeah, and, and that's what I tell my kids. I'm like, technically, we are doing patterning. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> I am not a certified teacher. Well, and they do sell the, the class packs. Mm hmm. Or, or the classroom, which is really nice. Of course, there are never enough for a regular, normal New York City class size. <laughs> <laughs> I think last week someone talked about how they had their kids come up with a Zentangle um, that they left in the classroom and they just added it to the pack. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have my eighth graders create two original Zentangles every year and they leave those behind for all my other classes. So it just builds and builds and builds into a, pa a, a huge packet. That is a great idea. So you can basically your own, mm -hmm. your own gallery of potential patterns. I like that. I'm a, a high school art teacher um, here in Texas. Hi, how are y'all? Hi, Norm. I use, hi. <laughs> um, I, do a project with my Art One students for their sketchbook covers. I have to make sketchbooks every year, and I've got a sample if y'all want to see it. Because sure. I make them, some of them won't buy a sketchbook, and so I make them make one. And this is what I do for them. I'm going to switch over to my. Uh, I just highlighted you. <laughs> oh, I see that. No makeup. It's Horrible. Like <laughs> Sorry, I'm. It's. Not a one. Okay, I guess I'll just hold it up to the screen. Oh, my apologies. What happened? Oh, I think you're sharing. Okay. 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 All right, so it's backwards, uh, but I make them do that on a huge sheet of paper. They do a huge Zentangle. They have to incorporate their name. And this is like one of the very first lessons that I have because we'll use our sketchbooks to plan everything. So they do four thumbnails inside and I don't know if I actually have the thumbnails in here, but I make them do four thumbnails inside and they, because I make them work in this weekly. 
And if they don't go out and buy one, I could give them sheets of paper, but then they get lost and I'm constantly having to find them. But if I make them make a sketchbook, the binding itself is a test grade. I mean, I get, I get assessments out of it. So, I, but I do the patterning. It's all my elements and prints, not all of them, but a lot of the elements and principles that I'm incorporating right here with this one project. And they'll do a portfolio as uh -huh. well as the sketchbooks. What size paper is that? This is regular 12 by 18 um, lick, 80 pounds weight. And I just, I make them, like I said, we do the cop Coptic binding. Uh -huh. There's four signatures. And like, I don't know if you can see where the, it's sewn, but the reason I, sorry, the reason I like it to be this sketchbook written instead of just gluing it is uh -huh. because it'll lay flat. And would if it lays like, flat. Would, would you like to do a session where we all learn how to do that? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, can you show I, us how to do that? I don't know if I would be able to, if it would articulate well on video, <laughs> um, because the the hole punching and stuff. And I don't know. I love bookmaking. I'm not good at it, but I I do it for fun. And right. I'm making I make my kids do it every year. But I mean, let me see if I can find my paperwork for it, and okay. see if I could get your supplies ready. And if so, then I could absolutely I would. Can I email you about it? Sure. And I've, I've, you know, the instructions that I have, because I took a class and I said, hey, can I steal this for my classes? And she said, absolutely, take it and run. <laughs> and so I have been ever since. That would be fantastic. I think that, that that's another alternative to the, um, to the accordion book. And yeah, and like I said, I absolutely love bookmaking. And with this, this, this project here, for my advanced class, hold on, I'll show you what I do for my drawing two class. Instead of doing the Zentangle projects, I make them do the illuminated manuscript type. Oh, I love that too. Nice. I've done that also. The art history that they incorporated is illuminated manuscript. Why it was important, they choose one letter and they could do script if they wanted to. But um, this one, you know, incorporate the border, the animal greenery and lettering you know those are four things that i want to see with the art but then you need to show me some values right that's great did you laminate that yes my friend would who left and i'm really sad about i would go in after school with these stacks of finished projects and this one i can actually take apart because i've never glued it to show people uh -huh. It's the same thing, and you know, like I said, we plan in there. There's a portfolio sketch design that we I make them plan. Oh, I must have created it. It's not. It has blue. One. Oh, it. All right. So, um, take Steph, I I have to I have to get going. My husband just got home. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you so much for tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and you. All of this, and I hope to see you guys next week. And I hope you at least enjoyed it or got something out of it. Oh, we did. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you so Thank much. You. Okay, Thank everybody, you. Have to take me a few minutes to turn everything off. Oh, this is over. No, no, Rob, <laughs> no. we can stay as long as we want. <laughs> okay, so this is the cover, right? It's bigger than the 12 by 18. Yeah. The cover itself is, you know, this is, you can see I use duct tape. Uh -huh. I must have used like the rubber cement because it's tacky and manila tag board to make the, the, the end pages. first page stronger. Okay. More support. Um, with this one, there's 20 sheets of 12 by 18 paper. And this page here that I do the cover is, I, I don't know the number, it's bigger than 12 by 18. So well, that we can, I can cover all this later, but I think that that would be a great lesson if you can um, do that with us. Uh, let me <laughs> let me see if I can find the the paperwork. Okay, because I don't know. And you could actually do this smaller, like a half sheet. It's still the same concept. It would be smaller, and then the cover can be made out of the twelve by eighteen. 
Okay. If you did it a uh, half sheet size. But um, like I said, I make my kids do this every year because I make them draw on technique day. And if I could, I previously I would just fold pages and give them and make them do front back, front back. But they, they erase the names, every, you know, it's with high school, you know. It, yeah, I know, I know. They're a fun group to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps us on our toes for sure. But um, no pressure. Just uh, I'll I'll be in touch with you about it, and we can discuss. Okay, it. I'll I'll see if I can find because I have a PDF of um, the all the specs to uh -huh. it, and I'll see if I can find it. Okay. But I I had my husband make some um, book cradles so that we could poke holes consistency. Mm -hmm. consistently and that way when we go to bind it it you know it lines up well right. okay. okay sorry I didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> I would, but anytime you talk about zentangling I get really excited and I've never heard about the neuro I don't remember what it's called <laughs> but I thought oh my goodness that it makes so much sense that that would be a meditative technique but there's science attached to it and I had never thought of that yeah, it's all connected. I just, you know, I love how one thing just leads into another, into another, and this is my happy place. It's my happy thing. And Thank you for suggesting smaller, because I don't think I could get enough paper right now that size. Yeah, I think whatever anybody has in the house is, you know, whatever we can gather. But yeah, to, and like I said, you can do them half book as, you know, and I like to teach the process of the book binding uh -huh. so that they can go back and make as many sketchbooks as they want. Yeah. You know, just so personal. we know how to do the basic construct and, and that would be great. I will look up and see if I have that because I, I absolutely, like I said, one of the teachers from I think Como came down and did a workshop and I took it and I absolutely fell in love. So I love book binding too. I like trying everything. Yeah, I'm learn everything and do everything. I am a master of none. <laughs> just I just go and you know my husband says, "Do you really need any more art supplies?" No, honey, I don't need it. I want it. <laughs> we we can say that we do need it. It's part of our job. Yeah, it is. It, we have to experiment before we let the kids loose. Exactly. Trial and error. For sure. And um, I'm just starting mine, so I don't really have much progress. But that's okay. I'm still inking. It's not a race, Mom. Take your time. What? Not no, a race. I know. Yep. Take your time. Me too. I'm still inking. <laughs> you guys At least I can hear you. I don't know what happened to my sound. We're going to have to work on your tech, Mom. Yeah. It was fine when I first connected and then the sound just went away. I just found out today that we're going to start school as normal and then um, we're going to have the kids are going to have the option. Or is anybody else in that boat? Yep, that sounds exactly like us. <laughs> Where at in Texas are you? Because we're in Waco. You're in Waco, we're in Tyler. Okay. So. We we are, uh, McLennan County is making public schools go uh, online until September 7th. And Bell County, which is right next to us, just did the same today. So. And they're giving our kids, like, if they choose to do the... Um, the compute the at home learning is what they're calling it. If they choose to do at home learning, they have to do that. But then they can choose to go to in class learning. But they have to tell the campus ten days before the new period starts. So they can switch, but not any day, any time. They have to say, okay, I'm going to commit to this this learning 
and then stick with it until the end of the, the grading period. Here in North Carolina, we just found out in my county today that if they choose the at-home learning, they have to commit until Christmas. Until That's Christmas. The way ours wow. is. Until Christmas. That's the way but, ours is. The whole and we're, we're doing week, week A, week B. Half of our population will come one week. Next week, they'll stay at home and do remote work. And wow. Yeah, it's going to be so cotton pick and confusing. And, and of course, with the kids who are at home. But now I'll be on a cart again, so. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, because they're not letting students leave their home room. They have to stay in the same room for six hours a day. What grade levels? K-8. K-8? Yeah. I, was a, I, I, I started in elementary and just moved on up. I think this is the last year I'll have some of my elementary kids. Mm, cool. It'll be an interesting year. Yeah, we've, got, we've got a total of three elementary schools and one high school in the county. And what they're going to do is they're going to make sure that all children in the one family, regardless of which school they go to, they will go to the school the same week. So if you have five kids in two different schools, they have to end up going to school the same week. So the family wow. doesn't have to worry about. We gotta figure that out. Yeah. We coordinate that. Yeah, the logistics of this is a nightmare. Yes, I mean it makes sense, but how are they going to coordinate that? I don't know. I'm glad it's. Not, I'm glad we're not a great big county. <laughs> yeah, we have. Um, I think 17 elementary. Oh wow. Five middle and two high schools. Wow. We, this is our first year, you know, because they like to change things for us. And this is that they're going to a modified block for high school for games and such, which, you know, they're not doing as well. I don't know what the plan is for that, but I'll have my first and my eighth period every day as of now. <laughs> and then all the other classes will go every other day. Hmm. To see Steph, I'm going to have to um, be that out of here. Um, I hope to see you next week, but I don't know for sure. But I will stay in touch via email. Great, and I'll send out everything. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. your your spearheading this. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Just gonna give you guys, it's 8.33, just for anybody who's concerned about time. I'm gonna head out too, um, so I will see y'all next week. All right, and um, if you need to talk to me, we, we're gonna have to run a, do a practice run on the demo stuff. So, oh, we have an appointment Monday, right? Yes, on Monday I figured we would run through everything and make sure it's working. Perfect. 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 All right. Thanks for joining us and thanks for doing next week. All right. Y'all have a good night. Good you too. Night. Stephanie, I'm going to leave also. Thank you so much. This was great. I'll You're see you all next week. See you next week. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. No, it's not on silent, but I will put it on silent. So. I'm going to have to head out too. We're having a thunderstorm, so I think it's safer just to get off the computer. So. All right. Be safe. Thank you. We'll see you next week. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. So I'll say goodbye too. All right. Thanks. See you soon. Looks like everybody's going to go. Thanks, Stephanie. See you next week. All right, Risa. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good night, everyone who's leaving. Good night. Night, night. Night, night.
Okay, and then there were three. <laughs> okay, well, I just joined because when it said, you know, come and have fun, here it was. <laughs> but y'all don't have to stay on. I have my granddaughter here, and I said, "Come on, let's go do some art." So she's in my room, in my my art room. She's doing art as well. But y'all don't have to stay on just for me. I just, it's you know how we are. We don't have people that our people are few and far in between. <laughs> well, I'm glad you joined us, and I'll be in touch with you. Hi, granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll be in touch with you, and don't feel pressured if you're if you're not up to it. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, I'll, I will. Regardless, I will look up the information and I'll email it to you when I find it. I don't know if it's on my home computer or at my school computer. Okay. Um, but, but I have a PDF of all the instructions. Perfect. So I will look it up and get it forward because it's a great project. It's a and she made the original cradle out of a shoebox and uh -huh. um, like not poster board, uh, mat board, uh -huh. just the building part, and you right. make one little template for, for to put, and push pins. And instead of using like the expensive binding thread, I, I buy the spools of thread at Walmart for upholstery, and it That's holds, you, you use like one, one strand, you don't even double it. Wow. And I'll be happy to demonstrate, but it's everybody getting the right stuff, if that makes wow. sense. If they if they want to participate and you give the the specific list of materials, they'll get it. If they don't want yeah. to, they could still just watch, you know. And if they want to do it later, they can they can do it later. But I think you know there has never been a year where I haven't I haven't benefited from doing a sketchbook or learning how to do book binding. And, and I think all of us are kind of in the same boat, especially when. You know, the kids can't afford to go out and buy sketchbooks. If we could show them how to make it themselves, I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah, and you know, you can take, I actually saw, it was a link on Facebook that I saw where they took a watercolor pad and took it out of the watercolor pad, folded it, and used that for their watercolor sketchbook. But they oh, just found it. Me too. That's yeah. great. Because, you know, anytime it's a tear out pad, my kids, if I said buy a sketchbook and it's highly suggested you get a ring bound, right. they would come back with the, the tear off and yeah. it's like they fall apart, their pages come out. And so I just decided when I went to middle school, I said, my kids are all going to make sketchbooks and that's what they'll use. But I just learned this technique about five years ago. That's so, awesome. And for my, my painters, what I do is I buy the big rolls of canvas and I have them sew the little pocket so they can just slide the book in. Oh, wow. That's great. I have a painted canvas that they do art <laughs> on, which is a project and assessment. And then they can interchange the sketchbook guts in it so that they have a um, book cover, basically. Hi, Mario. Can you hear you? You're muted. I'm unmuting. Can you hear you guys? <laughs> yes. Hi, Norma. We're just Hi, wrapping it up. <laughs> I, I just wanted to see how it went. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't come drop in, but how many people are left with you guys? Or just you two? It's just, it's uh, just me. three of us. And mom oh, okay. is, of course, here with me. Uh, we, had, um, we had 23 people, I think, today. Oh, uh, so great. So great. Well, listen, I don't want to take your time. I just thought I'd pop in. And if there were more people, I can give a greetings. But nice to see you, Norma. And your Thank daughter, you. I assume? Granddaughter. Granddaughter. <laughs> so she's staying the night with me. I watch her two days a week. Ah, uh, OK. Well, thanks again. And Steph, we'll, t we'll touch base uh, later on. Great okay. job. When I, when I log out, you'll probably get the email about the, um, the video. So just forward that to me. You got it. You got it. OK. Right. Bye, guys. Bye. I guess we could just wrap it up. Mom, I will talk to you later. What? And Thank I'll you for doing this. Later. I'm happy to do it because it's something that I, I want to be involved in. I want a place to make art too with other art people. So I get something out of it too. Well, y'all have a blessed night. You too. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye, Mom. What did you say before? We'll talk later or tomorrow? Either oh. one. Yes. What? Yes. Bye. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs>